In rare cases, Alzheimer's disease can be transmitted from person to person. Scientists have found a probable link between a therapy used decades ago and several cases of Alzheimer's disease. In the new study, they focused on five people who, as children, received injections of growth hormone obtained from the pituitary glands of deceased people. The patients showed signs of early dementia later in life. This suggests that Alzheimer's disease can be transmitted from one person to another through certain medical procedures. Scientists have identified people with Alzheimer's disease whose disease was likely triggered by therapy intended to stimulate their growth during childhood. Between 1959 and 1985 in Great Britain, over 1,800 patients underwent treatment with human growth hormone obtained from the pituitary gland of deceased people. This hormone was mainly administered to children suffering from various diseases causing growth disorders. In 1985, one of the patients died of Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, a rare and fatal brain disease. It turned out that some of the hormones given to children contained prions, i.e. infectious disease proteins. Shortly after this, more cases of Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease appeared in children treated with growth hormone. This resulted in the withdrawal of this form of therapy. Currently, similar therapies are carried out with a synthetic hormone. But such treatment was not only carried out in Great Britain. Approximately 200 cases of Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease have been documented worldwide and are attributed to hormone therapy. These cases come mainly from Great Britain, but also from France and the USA. Later studies showed that deposits of beta amyloid, proteins characteristic of Alzheimer's disease, also appeared in the brains of many patients who received the therapy. Studies conducted several years ago on archived samples containing hormone obtained from corpses showed that some of them, in addition to Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease prions, also contain beta amyloid proteins. After injecting the contents of the samples into mice, it turned out that in this way the pathology of the disease could be recreated. Protein from the samples administered to the brains of mice induced the formation of amyloid plaques characteristic of Alzheimer's disease. This led scientists to wonder whether contaminated hormone preparations could also have caused the development of Alzheimer's disease in people who received them. In recent analyzes published in Nature Medicine, scientists from University College London took a closer look at the brains of people treated with controversial therapy as children. This publication presents the first evidence that Alzheimer's disease can be transmitted during medical interventions. The study authors emphasize that the cases analyzed concern medical practices that are no longer used and that the analyzes in no way suggest that forms of dementia, such as Alzheimer's disease, may be contagious. Alzheimer's disease usually affects older people, most often after the age of 65. However, it starts much earlier. We're still not sure how. But abnormal amounts of beta amyloid and tau protein seem to play a big role in the development of the disease. These proteins begin to concentrate in the brain decades before the first symptoms such as memory loss, appear. Despite years of research, the exact processes that cause the disease remain a mystery, but it is clear that the aging process leads to changes that fuel its development. Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of dementia. This is a general term for loss of memory and other cognitive abilities severe enough to interfere with daily life. More and more people are suffering from Alzheimer's disease, which is related to the increasing life expectancy. Unfortunately, 
This disease has now become the fifth leading cause of death worldwide. In new research led by John Collinge of University College London, UCL, researchers examined eight people who received hormone injections as children. In 2015, the same team of scientists found beta amyloid deposits during autopsies of four people treated with growth hormone. These people died in middle age from Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. But the presence of amyloid plaques in the blood vessels of their brains suggested that they had developed a condition called cerebral amyloid angiopathy, which causes bleeding in the brain and is often a precursor to Alzheimer's disease. Five of the eight people treated by researchers in the new study were diagnosed with early symptoms of dementia. Most of these symptoms developed in these people in their late 30s and early 40s, which is unusually early for this disease. Such early symptoms of the disease are usually related to certain genetic variants, but the researchers did not find them in the examined people. Among the remaining study participants, one person had mild cognitive impairment, and another had no cognitive impairment but had beta amyloid deposits in the cerebrospinal fluid. The conclusions drawn based on the analysis of eight cases do not provide certainty as to the findings made in the research. These people may have developed dementia regardless of hormonal treatment. Research commentators emphasize that these people suffered from many other diseases that could increase the risk of developing neurodegenerative disease. Another problem is the correct diagnosis. Alzheimer's disease at a young age is extremely difficult to diagnose. But the authors of the analyzes think otherwise. We think it is unlikely that this is a coincidence unrelated to hormone therapy, Collinge admitted. We are in no way suggesting that Alzheimer's disease can be transmitted from person to person through daily activities or routine medical procedures. The patients we describe were given a specific treatment that involved injecting them with material now known to be contaminated with proteins associated with the disease. However, the recognition of the transmission of beta amyloid pathology in these rare situations should prompt us to review measures to prevent similar cases from other medical or surgical procedures. The researcher emphasized. Researchers adapted a piston combustion engine to run on hydrogen. Scientists from the Krakow University of Technology have adapted a piston combustion engine to run on hydrogen. As emphasized by the team leader, Professor Marek Brzezanski, this is another innovation related to research on the use of hydrogen as a fuel, which has been conducted at this university since the 1980s. Inventors from the Polish University presented their innovative solution publicly for the first time on Monday during a special show at the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering of the Polish University of Technology. Rector of PK, Professor Andrzej Serrata emphasized during the presentation that one of the tasks of the Polytechnic is to shape a new reality and look into the future. Hydrogen is a fuel that can revolutionize transport, and at the same time poses a huge research challenge, noted the rector. He recalled that scientists from the Krakow University have been dealing with the use of hydrogen as a fuel in engines for several decades. And the solution just presented was created thanks to their knowledge and competence. Its innovativeness looks several years into the future, said the Rita. A team of scientists from the Department of Motor Vehicles of the Krakow University of Science and Technology, led by Professor, worked on adapting the piston combustion engine to run on hydrogen. Marek Brzezanski. For research purposes, a five-cylinder industrial Scania engine was used. 
Professor Brzezanski, recalling the history of research at PK on the use of hydrogen to power combustion engines, noted that the latest solution used all the knowledge acquired in previous work and introduced new, proprietary elements. The industrial compression ignition engine had to be thoroughly rebuilt to use hydrogen as a fuel. Therefore, Scientists designed and constructed an entire new combustion system with dedicated pistons and a fuel supply system. It was, among others, printed on 3D printers, ignition system, throttle modules controlled by a stepper motor, or engine software. All these elements were made in the Department of Motor Vehicles of the Polish University of Technology, explained the scientist. If the production of hydrogen from renewable sources starts in full swing, hydrogen can be used for piston combustion engines during the transitional period of automotive evolution. The greatest advantage of this solution is the benefits for human health and the environment. No emissions of toxic exhaust components and no carbon dioxide emissions, said Professor Brzezanski. He added that Krakow scientists are conducting research on the use of hydrogen in many ways. In addition to adapting the piston combustion engine to this fuel, they also cooperate with Toyota in work on hydrogen cells and develop their own structures. In the cathedral, among others, single-cylinder engine with an innovative system of direct hydrogen injection into the combustion chamber.